Hi FlossTube, it's Lynn, the Canadian Stitcher. I've been gone for a couple of weeks. Uh, my last video was March 24th and I'll tell you why in a second. So f hello first of all and welcome back to um, my subscribers that have seen me before and welcome to my new subscribers. Um, March 31st, two Sundays ago, two or three. Sorry. Um, I didn't have very much progress to show. There just wasn't a whole lot and the video that I had made previous to that was a really quick one too that was just showing a little bit of progress so I decided not to do one that week. And then last weekend I was going to um, make a video and this is going to sound funny but I watched that show Hoarders because um, it inspires me to declutter and clean things up. So there's actually a new season of Hoarders on. I think it's on a and &E. I can't remember. Anyway, so I was watching that and I got inspired to completely go through my bedroom again and uh, declutter, organize, sort things out. And um, yeah, so then I just kept up with it. And I knew I would, if I stopped to make the video, I would probably wouldn't finish it. And I wanted to finish it as a whole big, project done in in the, the one day um, so I completely decluttered and organized my bathroom the drawers the cabinets um, all my makeup skincare products nail polish and then my bedroom I even vacuumed under my bed <laughs> like super cleaned everything uh, decluttered the bench and uh, the drawers my closet um, and I have a gemstone uh, collection that I have um, displayed on a bench that's in my in my um, bedroom and it was kind of dusty so I actually washed kind of hand washed and dried all the gemstones and then put the display to back so um, really good progress um, I need to go make another pass through my jewelry again I already did one uh, went through all of my jewelry but I still think there's more that I can get rid of and I'm using it some of it in with the cross stitch and the different um, gadgets and things so we'll talk about that too so uh, I've been doing uh, minimalism yes I have um, not to an extreme um, but I am a person who just acquires too much stuff and I just I just have too much stuff and it bothers me and I because uh, my house is several level levels so I'll put things in a little pile at the bottom of the stairs to go upstairs but then the pile just builds and I never end up taking stuff up and I'm tired of all these little piles everywhere of things to be put away and so what I'm trying to do is I want open spaces, I want my floors cleared um, and go back to how I used to have my house with everything had a place to be put and everything was put in its place when I was finished um, working with that. All. Um, like even the kids toys were very very organized. It's Lucy trying to bust down the door. Um, so it's not true minimalism. I don't have my entire house is not black and white and um, that I have nothing in, in my rooms. But I just want there to be lots of open space and um, just everything really tidy and easier to clean. So it's so much easier to clean things if you don't have stuff all over. So um, I listened to the, I watched that YouTube uh, no, Netflix, sorry, um, all that show, The Min Minimalists, or Minimalism, can't remember what it was. And that really inspired me. Um, and I listened to the audiobook of The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. So that is inspirational also. And then I watch, uh, she's not a cross-stitcher, but she's a YouTuber, and her name is, uh, her channel name is called The Clutter Fairy. And I watch her, she does, the, it's kind of videos of lectures that she gives to a, a group, I believe she's in Texas. And um, she breaks it down into different um, categories, like how to organize a garage, how to organize a, um, you know, craft room, how to organize or how, you know, just specific topics, preparing for um, potential something like in Texas where they have, you know, a hurricane or whatever, being prepared if a hurricane's going to come, that you're all prepared and you can, you know, get everything that you need is in one spot kind of thing so her videos are really really good I listen to hers um, when I'm at work sometimes I just put them on and I listen to them like podcasts <laughs> uh, so last summer I emptied my garage so that was my goal 
uh, summer was to, I wanted my garage to be empty. So when I had my weeks off, when I have a week off at a time, I would do some work in there. It actually took me two sessions. I probably didn't work at it straight for seven days or anything like that, but working on it and then I didn't complete it. So the next time I had the week off, it was like, this is getting done. June 1st or whatever it was. And I did manage to completely empty my garage, which I've always parked in my garage, so there's been always enough room to get my, I have an SUV, it's big enough to get that in there, but I didn't want all the stuff along the sides, and that's where I had stored my um, jewelry uh, stock, and some of the displays were out in the garage, so those got moved. Um, and then I made trips to the thrift store to drop stuff off. I had a whole load to go to the recycling depot, garbage bags, and I donated a lot of stuff. If it was in my garage, it's in my garage because I wasn't using it, so why am I hanging on to it? So I did a really good job. Uh, sometime if I can, I'll learn how to insert a picture and I'll show you a picture of it, but all that was left was my folding tables. So I have these tables from, um, from the business, and then my shredder box and my dusty golf clubs and my emergency winter um, box that I put in my vehicle, um, emergency kit or whatever was just on the one shelf. Yeah, it looked really, really good. So, and then I, it's a goal to do the same thing in my basement, but and I just want the minimum amount of stuff down there. So all I need to do is just go down there, sweep the floor, wash the floor, and keep it really tidy with, with not a lot of stuff. So there's still stuff in the basement. I kind of work on that one off and on and off and on, but so on my uh, weeks off, I've taken, requested a week off each month from May through September. So what I'm planning on doing is doing a different room on each of those weeks. So there's going to be the laundry room, um, the kitchen, and the kitchen cupboards and getting rid of as much stuff as I can from there, my craft room, and this room where I do the videotaping. So this is one of my son's old room and when he moved out, he actually left quite a bit of stuff in here. So. I might encourage him to remove more of it or I might box it up and store it for him. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, and then, yeah, that's going to be my goals of getting things not perfectly minimum, like not just having nothing, but only having what I need and what's reasonable, except for cross stitch. Anyway, so um, stitching jewels. Everybody's talking about stitching jewels. Oh, she's one of my favorites. So she did. She has her blog, and she has listed all the people on YouTube who make cross stitch videos in alphabetical. I think she has close to 400 people now. So I'm so appreciative of that. That is fantastic. She's put so much work into that. Um, so if you're someone who cross stitches and you're wanting to make some videos, now is a really good time to start. If you've been hesitant, jump on it now if you're wanting to. This, there's so much support in this community um, and like having that list compiled that we can go and find more cross stitchers easily. Um, yeah, that's, it's awesome. I'm so glad you did that. If you don't want to make videos, obviously you're still supporting the cross stitch community by watching, liking, subscribing, commenting. That's the support from the community because there's so many people that watch, but you know, it's, it's 10 times as, or 100 times more people that are subscribing than there are making them. So yeah, that's... Sandy B uh, said it well in one of her video, videos, Sandy B Stitcher. She said she may not watch everyone, but she'll support them by subscribing to them. And I think that was very well said because if there's 400, I don't even know if that would be possible to stay caught up on, on everybody, watch everybody's videos, make comments and, and that. I don't know if that's possible. Um, so my plan is I'm going to subscribe to as many people as I can. I'm going through my subscription list in alphabetical order. I'm trying to get, you know, better at liking and commenting and um, giving shout outs to people to help, like, encourage and, and build the community. So that's that's what I'm doing. So once I'm finished getting through all of mine that I already have alphabetically, I'm gonna to go to Jewel's list and I'm gonna probably end up subscribing to everybody that she has on her list as a way of supporting everybody. Um, yeah, and there's some, some people that just their um, style of stitching that they do is just not something that interests me. I can subscribe to them, but I may not wanna watch those videos of, of um, 
some of them, the, I mean, I have a big variety, but um, I don't even know how to say it without, without sounding rude, but I'll, I'll subscribe, but I may not be able to watch everybody. Just, yeah, I'll just say, say it like that. Um, this week, I'm going to, my shout out is going to be to the Rocking Stitcher in the Netherlands. So she's new. She has, I think, four videos posted. She's working on some haids and she's making some really, really good progress on her haids. She's, yeah. Uh, she was the winner of my 500 subscriber giveaway. And so that's always a, a cue to me when I pull out who the winner is. I go and I watch their videos and then I try to kind of personalize the, the extra little gifts that I'm going to put in uh, with uh, the prize that they win, the chart, the cross stitch um, prize that they win. So I had, um, she, in one of her, her third video, I think she said she didn't have a scissor fob. So I was like, hmm, I know how to make scissor fob. So I made her a little scissor fob and included a little bit of jewelry for her sons and um, some jewelry for her too. And she was really, really grateful for that. So uh, I think she shows it kind of like an unboxing at the end of her fourth video. Yeah, she's really cute. Um, so I did, I made a bunch of scissor fobs and um, I have so many jewelry supplies and so many things that can be used as making scissor fobs or needle minders and I don't want to take away anything from anybody who's doing that as a business but for myself personally I have the supplies I have an abundance of, of supplies um, I have the know-how and, and the tools to be able to make things so I've made a whole bunch of scissor fobs <laughs> and I'm probably going to be doing um, kind of like a weekly scissor fob of the week kind of a thing so anyway so how I displayed them is I just this is a necklace rack that I had from my jewelry and so I just put them all onto this rack here this one's really heavy um yeah and then I'll switch them out every week I'll use a different one I have I really like skeleton keys and you're going to see something interesting coming up with skeleton keys soon uh, yeah, so I made the little scissor fobs, and obviously I like variety, so I'll be changing out my scissor fob each week. And then I'm also making my own needle minders. I did go on to Etsy and look at them and um, was going to purchase some, and then I just thought, I have so many of those strong magnets, because those strong magnets, what they were, is they, I would actually arrange them, configure them, and make up bracelet, bracelets out of them, and there were these really strong magnets. So I have like a bin like a little bin full of them so I might as well use them right so um, if you want to make scissor fobs for yourself they're not hard to do but you, you need a good strong magnet um, your average little fridge magnet's probably not going to be strong enough to hold but anyway so I just used a couple of different things and then when my brain will get focused on something and then everything I look at, I'm like, I can make that into a needle minder. I can make that into a scissor, scissor fob. So I did a whole bunch. <laughs> anyway, these are some of them. Um, these were just stickers, actual just little stickers that I stuck onto a piece of cardboard with hearts on it. And then I cut them out, or sorry, then I laminated them and cut them out and then just stuck the magnets on the back. These are 3D butterflies that I got just at the dollar... Dollarama, I think we have here, and I just put the magnets just in the middle of the butterfly that's there. This was some old jewelry that I took apart. These were some old um, gemstones, little turtle collection there. And then same thing, these little owls were just stick stickers that I stuck onto a piece of cardboard and then put magnets on. Got my own Frankenstein, and got my agates, and then these also were just little stickers. And then different little skeleton keys. I have more, they're all scattered everywhere on all my different projects, but I just organized those on a magnetic board. Um, yeah, so I'm making those and I've been including some little um, needle minders with the, the giveaways also. Uh, I'm going to do questions and comments now is going to be a new, a new section. So uh, I got a comment from Loves, Rubber Stamps and Needle Crafts. Uh, she'd watched my video where I sh it must be my first video where I showed those um, birds the s early spring the full coverage one that I did that I had the page line um, that was so obvious and she said to get rid of that flip it to the back use a similar color and run it under a few stitches on each side of the line back and forth all the way down the line 
And then I commented back to her, you know, it's, thank you for the information, but it's already been framed and it's hung up in my living room. I don't even notice it. It's, yeah. But that's a, a good tip if you have a piece that you're working on, you're noticing a page line, give that a try or maybe go look on her channel. Maybe she has a, a demonstration of, of how to do that. So let's talk about my... Um, progress. So I had very little, like I said last two weeks ago. Um, but I'll go through. I'll show you what I've been working on for the last two to three weeks. So um, I had started for um, first day of spring, lilacs and chickadees, dimensions gold. And this is how much progress. I, that was, I think, the last day that I had made a video. So I was working on that one on the Sunday. That's how much progress I have. And just started in the bottom corner there. And then when that one was done for the week, I picked up the Christmas Goose. Um, this is from 1984, I think it is. 1984, yeah. This is a Designs by Gloria and Pat Canada Cross Stitch Christmas Goose. So I know that the geese was a real fad in the 80s and it's very dated, but um, I actually like this one and not finding it dated as being a country Christmas, a goose or whatever, because this one's a, a Canadian, or how do you call them, Canada goose. Um, I have some stories about Canada geese. <laughs> This video is going to be long enough. I'm not going to have time to tell you my geese stories. Um, yeah, so then I, I I made some good progress on it. I think I finished the neck and all in here. And then I finished the bow and decided to take this one to work and work on this one on my lunch breaks because it's 14 count. It's really easy to see. And with this kit being as old as it is, I'm having lots of problems with tangling, knotting of the threads. So... Um, They've certainly improved their quality of the threads that they have now. Don't experience nearly as much tangling, but I have had a lot with that one. Sorry. Okay, so I did my uh, weekly Christmas ornaments also. Oh, and I put this in a little box. I'm going to tell you one little story, but let's look at these first. So this is my weekly Christmas ornament project. There's a little snowman. snowman. There's some um, candy canes. And a Christmas wreath. Christmas, Christmas wreath. That's hard to say. Yeah, um, these are just done on the plastic canvas. I'm gonna probably back them with foil after. So, okay. So I hope you hope that you can see this and read that. I don't know if it's backwards or not. So it says, "Need a skull? Take a skull. Have a skull. Leave a skull." That's weird, hey? No, it's not. So um, when I had my jewelry business, this. I had these little, I made these bracelets for the kids with skulls in them. I actually ended up making some for adults too, they like them. Um, but the kids especially like skulls, eyeballs, spiders, you know, any any kind of spooky little things like that, they like them. So these were, I think they're Howlite beads, and so I would just put that as a feature and then put, you know, the, the plastic or wooden beads around them. And then... Um, it's like a feature on, on the bracelet. So this one, there's some of them that I couldn't, they're not drilled all the way through the, the bead. So I can't actually string it. So I was just, any ones like that, because I buy them in a mixed bag, right? Different colors and whatever. So I was just putting them out on the table. I would just leave them out on the table by that display. And if one of the kids picked them up and looked at them, I'd say, oh, you can take that. It, it, it's a bead, there's, you can't, I can't do anything with it. You can just take it. So I was just giving out these little skulls to the kids. Then the one day I came up with this idea from that, have a penny, leave a penny, need a penny, take a penny. So I did it as scalps instead as a bit of comedy at my jewelry booth. And there was a boy that came up and his dad was in a hurry and he was looking at this and he read it and he's looking at these skulls and his dad's going, come on, hurry up. We got, we got to go. We've got, we have to be somewhere. So, and he goes, but dad, it says if I need a skull, I can take a skull and I need a skull. <laughs> So he ended up, he took a skull with him and he, he was so happy. That's funny. Anyway, I just did it as a, as a comedy thing. Uh, so then I restarted Death by Cross Stitch. I'm, I've got my calendar here. So 
kitchen time. It's going to take me too long to figure out which, what the, the date it was that I restarted it. So this is the Long Dog Sampler Death by Cross Stitch um, that I'm doing on white. And I had started in a different blue, didn't like it, tore it out, and I got 820 instead. So this is how much progress I was able to make. I think this is uh, during the week, the evenings I was working on this, and then working on that goose at work for my lunch break. And I'm not sure if I worked this on the weekends either. This might have just been what I did on the evenings. This was a rough start, and so I was starting to wonder if it was hexed, honestly, because I had ripped out those that other color of blue. Um, I went to set this up on my Q-snap and I saw that there was a spot of blood on it and I was like, or a, a little stain, it was just like a little red smear and I was like, what is that? So of course with my finger, I went and touched it again, got more blood on it. Lucy had scratched me by accident. Lucy had scratched my finger and it, I was bleeding a little bit and hadn't even noticed it. That's how minor the scratch was, but it got on my cross stitch. So immediately I ran and run it under cold water and left it soak and um, yeah, I can't, you can't even see where, where it was. So I washed it out immediately. And of course, uh, when I washed it out, I put a bandaid on my finger and then a few minutes later I was washing my face. So I took the bandaid off and then I went back to it and I got blood on it again. Uh -huh. So ran back upstairs, washed it again. And then when I went to start it, I couldn't get it on the Q-snap. I must've tried six different times trying to get this on the Q-snap and I was just like, okay, Good energy here. This is this is this cannot be a jinx piece. This has got to be good. So yeah. So after that, then I remembered because I'm a nurse that hydrogen peroxide takes off blood stains. So I bought this at the drugstore. So I'm going to be the the tester. I don't know if anybody's done this on cross stitch. And it's been successful yet, but I know that it works. Um, if you don't want to watch this part, you can just fast forward for a second. I'm just going to take a little tiny bit of hydrogen peroxide. I nicked my little leg when I was shaving this morning. So I wiped it on there. So the hydrogen peroxide, and this is dry now, so I'm not 100% I'm not sure if this is going to work as good as if it's if you did it right away for sure it would get it out but so um as a i'm not a young nurse either i'm an old nurse <laughs> so we used to wear white uniforms that was kind of the thing pastels were just coming in and then it went all those to all those dark colors too but if we ever got blood on our shoes or um sorry i'm trying to hide that um on our uniforms first thing we'd run for was to grab hydrogen peroxide gauze or a little q-tip or whatever and remove the stain so what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually stitch a little this is okay it's going in the garbage i'm going to stitch a little tiny bit i'm going to put some hydrogen peroxide on it and see what it does to the threads if it damages them all i'm not going to do this on one of my big pictures of course but i'll do a little test piece i'll try it putting the hydrogen peroxide onto the dmc floss and ada fabric and just see if it does anything i might do two little test strips and do one where I put the hydrogen peroxide on it and then rinse it and then on another one just try putting hydrogen peroxide on it and letting it dry and see if it and then you know I'll kind of hang on to this and I'm gonna see if that would cause any damage so I'm not saying for 100% sure that this could damage your DMC threads or your fabric because I don't know that for sure but I know um, that's what breaks down hemoglobin in the blood it takes out blood stains so I'm gonna I'll be the, the testing person to do that uh what else did i do i plan oh yeah so for april 1st because it was april fool's day i was going to start another heaven and earth design bath time that was what i had scheduled to start on the first and then i thought i don't that's too many i have too many so i started on a medium project instead no i guess this one i would consider this one a large this, yeah, so this was the Cross Stitch and Country Crafts magazine, Better Homes and Gardens, from January, February, nineteen ninety three, and this was the little one. I had showed this that this was one I had always intended on making for one of my kids when they were born as a birth announcement, and that I never did. 
And I'm actually glad I didn't because now, um, because all those baby pictures are in my craft room now. I'm going to hang them up on the walls, but they're not being used, you know, they're not being enjoyed every day. They, they were when the kids were little. So what I was going to do, because it says at the, across the top here, it says announcing the birth of Melissa, and then there's a date there. So what I'm going to change this to is going to be announcing the arrival of spring. That's how I'm going to do it. So this will be uh, like a themed one for, for spring. And after a long winter, that's exactly what it feels like. It's like, welcome the arrival of spring. So I'll show you how far I got on that little one. I worked on this one. So I didn't actually, so I didn't start it on the first. I was working on the long dog sampler. And work was really stressful last week. So when I'd come home in the evenings, again, I didn't want to have to start off with a new chart, new symbols. Um, so I just kept working on the one I had out and then I started this one on last Saturday. Oops, see. So I started in the bottom corner just working on the little picnic area there. So I made some pretty good progress. I think I worked on that one for two days. I think. And that was my April 1st start. And I might still start bath time later in the year though but that's and I'm, for my birthday, I am going to be starting on um, Blue Dragon. I'll show that later. I'll show, probably show that next week. So that's going to be then one, two, three, four, five. That'll be six Hades, Death by Cross Stitch, full coverage Lynx. And Lynx, full coverage um, Fall Fairy, Winter Enchantress, so that's lots of big projects. And the Angel, also Angel of Summer of Air. Those are all big, so I didn't need to add bath time in on that one. Maybe later. Uh, Celtic Spring. Oh, yeah. So then Simply in Stitches, Tina, showed her Angel of Summer and her Celtic Spring. And because the light is so much better now, I thought I'd have an easier time to see. So I brought out Celtic Spring. She's so beautiful, my goodness. So this was the one that I was having trouble with the linen, having trouble seeing in the winter light. So I've got her on, oh, can't see me there. I've got her on the scroll, scroll frame. This, because I'm going to be doing the beading and the metallics, these are all parked threads here as I'm working on that border. So I'll, un I'll unwind this, I'll show you how far I got. But first of all, I'll just say, oh no, I'll unwind it first. So these are those stitch clips. I don't know if you saw my tips video, but these are the stitch clips that um, help to hold the fabric. It's like a little suspender clip with a Velcro strap. So you attach it to the fabric attach the clip to the fabric and then tighten up the velcro strap and it helps to keep the fabric uh, tighter uh, better tension just pop those off sorry i probably should have had this all on well before i started okay let's see if we can see her That's not working very good. There we go. So it's finished all the way down, except for, of course, the, it's not, sorry, it's not completely finished, but the um, beading and metallic threads I'm going to do at the end. So what I did was, when I had put it away, way back in the winter, there was a mistake in it, and I don't think I knew that there was a mistake, because if I uh, make a mistake and I'm too frustrated to figure it out, I will mark it on my pattern, I'll circle it, and then when I'm not so frustrated, I'll come back and <laughs> either fix it or rip it or, or whichever way I have to do it. But So there was a mistake. I think it was down here. I was over one and one up too high. So I was over and too high. 
over one and one too high. So that was two mistakes actually. And I noticed it when I got to about there. And then I went, mm, is it really gonna matter that I'm over by one? I don't think it's really gonna matter. But then when I got up to here, it didn't line up. <laughs> so I decided to rip. So I spent the better part of the morning yesterday ripping all of these stitches out and then restitched them. <laughs> So um, just working on her today and tomorrow, or yes, sorry, yesterday and today. I started on the letters at the top. I'm probably going to work the letters across today just because this is really easy. Um, the way the pattern shows it, the letters, the purple's there, but the, the pale part of the lettering is left blank. And I think I'm going to stitch them in with that kind of cream color. I don't know if you can see that, that little cream color there. I think I'll fill in the letters just so that it's, the texture is the same. Needle sticking over there. Okay, so I'm going to keep working on her today. And then um, next time I pick her up, then hopefully I will be able to finish the whole top part, the border along the top, and maybe start on the beading. And I'm probably going to set up her for beading on my dining room table um, somehow that I can, if I need to, just leave it. I can leave it for set up there because I, I'm not sure how long the beading is going to take on her. So this is, my working copy is so wrapped. Oh my God, it's got rips in it even. Okay, so I made this. <laughs> Ridiculous huge ring as a scissor fob. Oh, and then also on my scissors I have the needle threader. I just stuck it onto a clasp so that it doesn't get lost. And there's no way that this is going to fall between the couch cushions and get us, lose my scissors. So anyway, um, got my highlighters on there. I made this little needle minder from a piece of jewelry that I took apart. So that's good progress on her, and she's close to being done. Um, so what I did after I ripped out those stitches, um, when I rip, if it's from a kit and I'm worried that I won't have enough thread, I will reuse the thread that I've ripped out. But on something like this where it's DMC, I threw all that ripped out thread in the garbage, ended off the ends, and started with all new fresh um, pieces of thread just because they were overworked and they start it just doesn't look as good so uh, for this oh I also have some haul and I have a rack I'll tell you about both of those um, so this week I only work on Monday and Tuesday because I had more vacation time to use up yay um, so I am going to be starting on Tomorrow, and this will, this one will be easy to pick up and, and stitch. So um, for this week, so I work Monday, Tuesday. I'm off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is Good Friday. So I was thinking of working on this one Monday through Friday. That'll give me five days, and then doing a stitch in time. Um, the challenge piece on, on Saturday and Sunday so I can get one weekend in, in April of working on that one. But I'm going to start on Panthero Leo Lion. Stephen Paul Carlson is the artist. This one I had started over Christmas and it hasn't seen the light of day since, I don't think. So I'm really excited to get back to working on this one. Of course, I'm starting in the bottom corner. That's all black. <laughs> so I'm hoping that I can get a page finish. Um, working on that one for five days. So I'll show you. I went to the thrift store looking for something very specific. And I thought I would just check in the cross stitching or crafting section, which Value Village in St. Albert. Um, sometimes you can get some pretty crazy designer things there. A friend of my son's got a Chanel bag. 
from Value Village, and I know other people have gotten Lululemon <laughs> clothing. It's a different kind of place. Anyway, they don't have a very big craft section, but I did manage to flip through. They had quite a few quilting magazines and, and flyers, and I did find a couple of things there. So I'll show you these first. This is the Cricut collection, and like these were like two to three dollars, so I'm not going to go through the price of each one. I like this little Halloween one down in here. So I might stitch that one. I don't know about that goose though. That's more like the traditional, the country goose kind of thing. So anyway, that little Halloween one's cute. I picked up the cross country stitching magazine, which I already know I have in my collection, but I'll stick this one in with a, a giveaway prize just as an extra. It was a, it was a whole dollar. And then there's a, from the craft and things family, the cross stitcher. There's some pretty little roses in here. Oh, that's so many people like the cardinals. So if I was going to do it, I would probably just do the cardinal and not these white flowers. And then I don't think there was anything else in here that was that interesting for some little spring ducks. And... Oh, and there were little pansies. So I thought those were cute. So those might make some cute little needle minders too, just on, on some cardboard. I think that was it for that one. And then I got Joe Viros' World of Cross Stitch. 1001 Motifs, Borders, and Pattern Ideas. I've never seen this before. So this one has just different... Um, well, this one's interesting. I'm wondering... How am I, how am I, these have changed at all since this book was published. Uh, world map changes. Anyway, that was, there's some interesting little motifs. Even if it's not necessarily maybe doing the whole picture, but um, maybe working a couple of those onto Christmas ornaments or something like that. They have different um, sections. There's school days, there's England, country maps, Western Europe, Ireland. So this is, I didn't, I didn't look through the whole thing or study this book completely yet and do any uh, flagging things that I might be interested in. But that was cute, little book. And then I got Patrick Loss's Whimsical Cross Stitch. And there are some cute little funky designs in this one. Um, there's an Irish one. Sorry, I'm not even finding anything to show you. It's a hefty book, and then there's, there's a little bit of Halloween things. That might make some. I might do a Halloween tree this year with some Halloween ornaments on it. We'll see. And then I got one that has lots of swear words in it, so I'm not going to show those ones. Um, really cross stitch for when you just want to stab something a lot. Hmm? Kind of funny. Down with this sort of thing. This one's got a swear word in it. Not the worst word, but damn right we're snowflakes. Winter is coming. <laughs> I always do that the first day it snows. You look up the window and go, is that snow? Is it really snowing? I'm so angry I made this. And just ugh. <laughs> Funny. Finishing Touches by Stony Creek. Um, not so much for these. I don't know about those. And then once I got home, I was like, well, why did I buy this? I don't even like those ones. And now I remembered. Well, oh, there's a really nice little wolf there. And there's a really cute picture pattern for some pansies. And I thought it was buy five book, four books, get one free, but it's actually buy five, get one free. I'm not sure. Anyway, I was up at the tell already, so I didn't bother. But um, this is a blackjack paper pad. I think, I'm not a scrapbooker, but I'm assuming that this was like for scrapbooking. 
sold a whole bunch of different papers, so um, patterns on paper. So if we're making um, needle minders, I might use this for some of the backing on those. And then I wanted to get some fray check to get ready my blue blue dragon ready, um, which I've kitted up already. But I need to buy some threads. But anyway, I went to Mr. Frame in St. Albert, and she said I have something for you. And she went into the back, and she came out, and she gave me the entire bag of charms that she had left. I showed you that I had bought some of the charms from her, and she just said you can just have these. So nice of her. Uh, there's some little pearl hearts in there, which I'm definitely going to use. There's some in here that aren't that don't appeal to me, and I'm thinking maybe I might just make them into little scissor fobs and send them out with some of my like giveaways or something like that. There's some pianos, there's a Noah's Ark, and there's some golf clubs and cards like playing cards so I'm not sure anyway I like embellishments and then because my subscriptions creeping up a little higher I subscribers sorry I got another prize for a 750 subscriber giveaway and then she had this one Lenora Corbett so this one is the um, four calling birds I just like the birds, so I'm probably just, I'll stitch it and I'll just put, I might not even just, I'll just leave the letters out because I don't have all 12 of these for, from that song, right? She had a French Country 4, another little Halloween one, and then she had all of these, Just Nan. Which I've never stitched any of just Nan. I, so I'll just let you read the names because I don't have to keep turning them all around. So they're all these angels. And she had these ones all marked down 75% off. Yeah, it's a good price. So I'm not sure if I'm going to stitch these up as Christmas ornaments or whether I'm going to want to do them with the little frames. I'm thinking maybe Christmas ornaments. Wanna, like, to make them smaller, here's a finer Ada. Oh, did I show that one already? Did I buy two of the same? I did. Well, there's going to be another prize to go in the giveaway because I don't need to. And there's Grace, Joy, Felicity. very pretty they have really pretty faces so I just showed you what the subscriber prize is going to be 750 subscribers but I need to get there and then I'm going to give away this chart which is red sugar and obviously maybe I'll do two giveaways and then I got a Stony Creek I don't believe I've ever stitched anything from Stony Creek um, this is back to ghoul. I only, I only have that one Halloween picture. And it's a very simple one, but I'm thinking I might like to do some more little Halloween pictures or ornaments or something like that. And then she had two more Christmas kits that were marked down. What is this one? Dimensions. Joy Tag Ornaments. Oh yeah, so those are the actual little bells there. The cross stitch. And this is, um, it's like plastic canvas. And then another one by Dimensions, Jingle Bell Ornaments. Oops. These are kind of 
tree appeal. Same thing. This one comes with a bunch of little embellishments and bells and chains and things. Yeah. So. And then I had gotten some a few things from 123 Stitch. Um, so many people I've seen stitching this one. Bent Creek. The Begin Row. A journey of a thousand miles must begin with a single step. And that goes with my trees theme for my living room. Not going to start this one anytime real soon, but needed to get it. <laughs> and also, and a forest group. Blitz Ditch, I believe that I saw, did this one. Hmm, interesting. And then I got two other things, two other kits that I'm going to be doing something different with. So I got this Dimensions Springtime Counted Cross Stitch Kit and Gold Collection Victorian Elegance. This is with the ribbon embroidery, which I'm probably going to change. And then I got brown and white and cream colored perforated paper for my Christmas ornaments. Okay, so I'm going to be off. I took those couple of days off, so I'm going to have to get, I've got to get my income tax done. So last year um, was the first year that, it, that was actually the last year that I had business tax to um, submit. And I went to the same accountant that I usually go to when I picked up my taxes. I noticed that there was an error and I pointed it out to them and they said, no, no, we'll correct it. And they didn't. And so I got a big refund from Revenue Canada. And then later on, I got a letter that said, oh, we found a mistake in your taxes. So you actually owe us $4,000. Hmm. That wasn't very good. So when I called the accountant, they said that they would do my taxes for free this year. So I got to get my taxes in because I owe. So it definitely needs to be in by the deadline of April 30th. It is in Canada. Okay. And I'm going to be getting my hair cut. Finally. Um, and one other thing, if you watch it, are you excited for Game of Thrones? I am. PVR is all set. Ready to record. Oh, that show is so good. If you haven't watched it yet, highly recommended. It does have very mature content. No kids allowed to watch that. Um, I'm going to give you some spoilers. Everybody that you like dies. Everybody that you hate dies. Some of them die more than once. Everyone is connected to someone else or related somehow. All the stories are intermingled where you start to really see that season five, six, seven. How everybody is now, oh yeah, that guy over there was the dad. Of, yeah, all of that. And very few of the characters are actually who you think they are. And that's all I'm going to say. Season 7. The ending was very interesting. So I will be starting Season 8. And I don't know how many episodes they made, but I know that we've been waiting for two years for the final season to come. So, Alright, so I think that's all I have. Did we do... I'm sorry, I can't remember. If we did the nail polish because people have been asking what color I'm wearing in certain videos so I thought I would just tell you so this week's color is I usually change my polish weekly this one is a Sally Hansen extreme wear in mauve over it's just a neutral I think last week I was wearing blue so I went with a neutral and then I was gonna do a different bracelet each week because I because I sort of throw all my jewelry and everything is so organized now, I'm starting to wear my jewelry again. So a lot of stuff's just been sitting and not being worn. So this is one of my, I mean, it's not a design because all it is is a memory wire um, with Swarovski crystals strung on it. I had bought, when I first started working with the crystals, I bought three millimeter and I bought four millimeter and they were the same price, but it took more three millimeter crystals to make an anklet or bracelet so I had to charge more for them if that makes sense so I discontinued the three millimeter but I had a factory pack of this color that's the crystal AB for Aurora Borealis and I didn't 
well, of course not, just throw them in the garbage or something. So I thought, I'm just going to use this whole pack. I'm going to start stringing this on a bracelet. And when I'm done, I will end it. And this is what I came up with. So, yeah, this one's got lots of bling on that one. Okay, that is all I have. And um, I see that it's 50 minutes long. I hope this isn't too long for you. The vi all the videos that I've been watching, I've been watching a ton of them. I like the ones that are about 30 to 45 minutes because usually I'm sitting down and cross-stitching and what I try to do is I'll watch one video and then I got to go do something. I got to go and clean something up in the house, sweep the floor or wash the floor or whatever, come back again, watch another video, go do something else. That way I keep my house clean but also get to do lots of my stitching. So yeah, I hope you all have a good week. I hope to do a video again next weekend and then I can talk to you about my April uh, one more start that I'm going to be doing for my birthday. And then I'm working on plans for mania. I'm actually going to do stitch mania. I'm not in a group or anything, but I am going to do the 15 starts for the first 15 days. And then July, I already know, is going to be focus on finishes for July. Maybe even for June. June and July, focus on finishes. And try to get as much of this. Well, not these. These are not going to get done. But try to get as many of these smaller and mediums and the ones that I have the new starts for. I'll try and get a whole bunch done. Okay, so have a good week. Thanks for joining me. Bye.